Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of the uh, MCU Rewatch. And once again, if you're unfamiliar, this is me basically going back and rewatching the MCU movies. And for this one, I didn't get to watch a lot this week, so this week the only one I watched was Iron Man 3, which I really like. It is kind of interesting overall the aesthetic of this movie, just like just how it plays out. I mean, he spends most of the movie not in a suit, which I think is kind of almost taking it back to the first movie in a certain extent. I guess almost the ending of the movie makes up for that because he's switching to the uh, suits what I still think is like the coolest thing ever he hasn't done that subsequently since I mean to be fair I guess this is the one moment he's ever had so many suits all together because subsequently he hasn't really had like that many suits I don't think it really comes up I mean especially you know when the movie ends and stuff like that he explodes all his suits and stuff like that it's even interesting because I didn't remember this, but at the end it doesn't say Iron Man will return, it says Tony Stark. I guess that's because going forward they really didn't know what they were going to do with Tony, I guess. But the direction uh, Iron Man 3 ends, because it almost seems like he's stepping away from Iron Man. But now looking at things, I'm like, well, I guess you could make the argument like he just made Pepper, that, that moment made Pepper realize like, okay, I'm exploding all these armors because these are armors I was making because, you know, I couldn't sleep, I was dealing with my own stuff. As he says, like a cocoon and stuff like that. Like the thing is, he says in the final line of it is I am Iron Man so I guess it I, but I guess maybe back then and maybe some people had the same uh, thought process too it's like oh that meant he was quitting being Iron Man it's like no uh, it was just more so like him starting from scratch of it just not being like because all those suits he made were just kind of his way of dealing with what he was doing just like a cocoon to protect himself but now it's like no like I am he doesn't need it anymore after, after everything that goes down in three so I guess that's kind of more so what it is why it's like Tony Stark because I guess like I said it still feels like maybe they didn't really know 100% what they were going to do with Tony going for because the next movie he's in is Age of Ultron which is like a couple movies away um and literally like two years away timeline wise but still um a lot of things I went to this movie not remembering I thought like things between him and Pepper were bad because I, I remember the whole Killian situation which I didn't remember his name until I started watching the um movie but um I thought like potentially her and Killian were dating because her and Tony had broken up. I was like, no, her and Tony were still together. I mean, they had their issues. I was actually quite surprised that he actually told her about like kind of his like panic attacks and stuff like that. I was like, oh wow. I guess that kind of shows some growth in Tony because let's not forget he didn't tell her about the whole like, oh yeah, I'm dying thing. But I guess it's one of those things too where it's kind of like she's moved in, they're a lot closer. So obviously you're going to open up to the person that you're closest to. So just personally, I just think that's kind of interesting. Like having seen the movies back to back, I realized, oh yeah, man, you kind of have heavily grown in that regard. Because I feel like he didn't have his like, I mean, he kind of, and two, because he was dealing with the whole I'm dying situation, he was acting more like the spoiled rich kid. But I feel like that never happened in three, not really. Like, I mean, he had his like celebrity moments and even then that, was, that wasn't like a big, big thing. It's just kind of like, oh yeah, Iron Man. Um, you, it's interesting too, cause you'd expect it to be even a bigger thing too, because this is like right after Avengers. They mentioned what went down in New York and stuff like that, but it's not like a bigger thing than it is. I think it's kind of interesting. You do get questions here and there like, oh yeah, what about the others? Are your Avengers gonna come back? So it is crazy that moment he has um, because of his like nightmares and stuff like that. The fact is that uh, like his suit was activating and it grabbed Pepper. I was like, that is a terrifying moment. I've forgotten about that. I guess the explanation for Tony's PTSD kind of like going for it, like I said, I remember that before even rewatching this, that being his struggle, like what he went through in Avengers like going through the wormhole like I mean for one he, even he kind of talks about it because the fact of the matter is his entire world kind of flipped upside down because like you meet the fact is there there are gods there are aliens like you like you have such a view of what the world is and then it gets all flipped upside down it's a lot to handle especially what he saw you got an interesting and I, I think and at least where I'm sitting I feel like it's kind of reflected in the movie too because things aren't like because if you compare the first two movies as like what are his enemies his enemies are kind of like him like even Ivan's whole situation even he in the end yeah he's got the whips and stuff like that but in the end even he kind of gets in like an Iron Man like suit so a lot of his enemies are Iron Man suits but then it's like no like uh he's fighting Killian who's got that whole like thing going on which I was trying to remember what his whole deal was I was like I remember him having powers and stuff like that but I didn't re remember what that was all about I guess it's more so like I mean I obviously it must have some kind of connection to a dragon because I love that moment where he breathes fire and Rhodey's like wait so so you you, you breathe fire it's like oh okay like his reality is kind of shattering at that moment too but also later on you see he's got like all these Killian's got all these like dragon tattoos so 
probably comic book wise that means something. I feel like that was never really tackled. I mean, the fire breath is the closest name, but I'm sure like in a comic book it's probably like, oh, he might be dragon or something. I don't know, you know? But it was like, it was science fictional what his whole deal was, but it's just kind of interesting. I guess the argument could be made that um, the reason um, he doesn't really have an Iron Man enemy because he was kind of facing himself in this movie because it was kind of like a, um, like I said, I don't know, like it almost has a one feel to it in a sense of you going back to basics. He's got the one suit left. He's trying to repair it. He's kind of like far away. Interestingly enough, um, I don't remember how true this is. I've never looked, actually looked into it, but years ago when the movie originally came out, I remember my cousin telling me that actually part of the uh, movie was actually filmed near my hometown. There's a small town near my hometown in North Carolina called, um, Rose Hill, which there's a town called Rose Hill, Tennessee in the movie. I don't know if that's what that's supposed to be or not. I don't know. I didn't, I, I don't know. It, like I said, I don't know how true it was. That was what I was told years ago. So I don't know, but maybe that's where they film stuff at. I don't know, which is pretty neat. I mean, that was always kind of like a cool thing, but, but getting back to it, it's still pretty badass the whole like how he operates thing, like them heating up and them kind of like, I was like, all right, so yeah, their bombs they explode. I was like, I was, well, I mean, that was kind of like the fail state. They're not supposed to actually do the whole exploding thing, which is interesting because obviously a lot of that science fictional and obviously what they do with the Mandarin, it, because even before watching this movie, I was slightly familiar with, familiar with the Mandarin because around the time, what was around 2011-ish, I think exactly 2011, there was the, was it? the Nicktoons Iron Man cartoon where like one of the main antagonists was the Mandarin. So that's kind of why I went into this one. Oh, is it going to be like, and it's like, nope, turns out. Cause I do think that's a nice twist to it. Taking this kind of well-known villain and making it just kind of like, oh, he's just an actor pretending playing this role. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it's super messed up because it's kind of like, oh, you're super okay with it. I mean, he's just kind of like drugged out of his mind and drunk most of the time. But at the end, you even see that he still has a fan base. Cause people are like, oh my God, you're so good. Like the, the screaming applause he gets when he's being arrested and stuff like that. I guess in the end, he kind of got what he wanted. I don't know. I still think that's kind of interesting to us. I'm sure a lot of people, like I said, I appreciate the twist now. I feel like I appreciated it in too, but even now I can go like, yeah, I get why some people probably wouldn't like that whole aspect of like you're taking this character who's one thing and then kind of making them something that they're not. So I don't know. I mean, who's to say that couldn't put, well, I didn't know they've already done it. So I doubt they'd ever go back and make that more like the comic book version. Cause he does kind of have more of a supernatural side to him in the comic books. Like there's the whole, I forgot what they're called, but I remember it from the cartoon. He was collecting all these different rings. Who, I think they borderline were kind of like an infinity stones type of situation almost. If not exactly that, I don't remember the whole deal, but it was like these rings he was collecting. But I remember, like I said, this is just my experience with that cartoon. I don't remember if that applied. I don't know if that applies into the um, comic books or not. And there's also that Harley kid, which I really liked him. Um, the whole like him trying to like, especially that at when like that last scene between him and Tony, where it's kind of like, he's like, oh, you're just gonna leave me? Like my dad is like, oh, you trying to guilt trip me? He's like, I'm so cold. Oh, I bet you are. You know how I know? Because we're connected. And it drives off. And he's like, it's worth the try. I was like, that little con artist is super good. Which, even low-tech wise, that's pretty badass. Once again, like, the Tony not being in the armor so much in a movie is the fact is that he infiltrated the compound where uh, the Mandarin is, or rather Trevor, and took everyone down with, like, low-grade equipment. It's not like he had the full-on suit, which I think is pretty badass showcasing that even without the suits, Tony's pretty, you know, super which you probably wouldn't want to say because you just inflate his ego even more. It's that situation where it's like Tony was talking about the fact that you create your own demons, which I am curious to see like, I mean, obviously, I mean, this was like the last Iron Man movie. So we don't know like what that would mean going forward, like with Iron Man and stuff like that. Like after everything is said and done, like after Infinity War for like what would be, I'm not Infinity War for Avengers for like what, the future holds for Iron Man, like movie line wise, you know? Because a lot of this stuff could come back like Harley. That's a storyline that hasn't really gone away. I mean, he's just a very smart kid. Uh, Tony gave him a lab and stuff like that. So that could turn into something in itself too. Cause I don't think that storyline has subsequently come back up. I'd already completely forgotten too that he had um, healed himself too of that, that thing in his chest. I was like, oh yeah, he got rid of all the um, shrapnel in his heart and he didn't have to have that thing anymore, in which he throws it away. And I was like, I completely forgotten about that. I would, in my mind, he still had it. Cause every subsequent time he's popped up, like I said, it's been a while since I've seen the other movies, but he, I guess cause when I saw him again in um, Spider-Man Homecoming, he was wearing a suit. Like I said, he was wearing suits most of the time. So I felt like it wouldn't shine through. That was just kind of an interesting aspect. I feel like, oh man, he got rid of that, holy crap. Also the whole Pepper having her moment at the end was pretty badass. Like 
ripping into the armor that was attacking her, having the arm on, and just like going badass like that. Like I remember someone a while back had a complaint about it just being like ha her having her moment like that, kind of like, I don't know what it was they were complaining about, but it's like, I was like, oh man, that's still pretty badass. I kind of wish she would have been able to keep that, but it's like, I mean, that probably would have eventually kind of messed her up staying like that for too long, so. When it comes to actors, like, the one who, the, um, one who's, the lady that's kind of, who's like Killian, who ends up attacking, uh, Rhodey, that's the actress who played Zelina in Once Upon a Time, and I'm blanking on her name, and I feel so bad about it, uh, which, you know, Josh Dallas is in that show, which, you know, he was in Thor, so it's kind of nice, but it doesn't stop there, because not only was she in that, she's also in Lost, but who was also in Lost was Evangeline Lilly, who's, you know, in Ant-Man and soon to be Ant-Man and Wasp so it's just kind of interesting how that circles around just little connections like that I think it's so fascinating also really quickly I was kind of right about the whole well I call them the Patriot but the Iron Patriot I was like right I, was, I, I knew I didn't remember that out of nowhere so I was right about it being in three I love it because it's like oh it tests better than War Machine War Machine seemed a little you know um, aggressive of a name so. But uh, even Rhodey had his badass moments outside of the suit. That always seemed like obviously when he's going to rescue the president like fighting off those dudes like he does some action hero stuff and it's just like wow I didn't remember Rhodey went all like badass like that. I even love when Tony gets it. He's like alright so where's my suit? It's like oh yeah man, sorry man they're all like signed up to my signature so but don't worry, I, I got your back. So I love that. Oh yeah and can't, now I'm thinking about it. He's like can't forget about the Gary situation either about Gary being like, oh my God, Tony Stark, he's like, dude, I've modeled my look after you. I even have a tattoo of you. And it's like, I mean, it's based off a toy, not an actual photograph. And it's like, okay. I mean, overall, I really like the movie. It's a lot of fun and it's a lot more, I don't know, it's, it's kind of, I feel like a different approach compared to like Iron Man 2 and, the, and 1 maybe. I don't know, like it just, it feels different. I feel like you can just kind of feel that in the movie. So I thought that's kind of a interesting touch. Oh, and there was one interesting other detail I thought was kind of fascinating. Um, it's kind of perfect timing, actually. The dude that the Mandarin, you know, shoots on television, that's a guy from the Roxxon uh, company, which is interesting because currently, like, the newest show to this whole MCU situation in, in general is Marvel's Cloak and Dagger, which uh, Tandy, aka Dagger, her dad worked for Roxanne, and I'm assuming that's going to be a big part of, like, the storyline. I'm just assuming. So it's just kind of interesting a little tie-in, because I didn't remember that company. I mean, it's like a one-off line, so. But I feel like it gets mentioned later on, too, because apparently they had some kind of issues later on where it's like one of their ships or something, like, spilled a whole bunch of oil. Kind of like the BP situation in real life, but, like, in this universe. I think there was, that was something like Killian was bringing up. So it's like two lines in the movies that kind of reference rocks on. So I thought that was kind of interesting. But overall, I really enjoyed the movie. Um, very interested to continue the rewatch. Next up is, uh, for real this time, Thor Dark World. Thor 2 Dark World. So uh, that's going to be the next one. I might be able to squeeze in Winter Soldier, which comes in after, on after that. Like I said, also depends on my time and stuff like that. So really, that's all I want to talk about in this video. Until the next time, we meet, be happy, be safe. We'll like to the fullest and enjoy it. Good day and good day.